Hi, I'm Raj Singh. I work with LSU Ag Center and I'm director of the Plant Diagnostic Center and Extension Plant Pathologist for Horticulture Crops. Um, so we received a sample from uh, a nursery here in Rapides Parish and this unique plant is called Ligularia. And you can see on the leaves they are worried about these symptoms over here. Um, so we're going to check it out. But before we do that, we try to look at the sample submission form and the notes they bring to us and see who it came from. Is it commercial or homeowner? And if we have enough information on when the problem started uh, and if they have any specific uh, testing to be done for that sample. When a sample comes in, we log it with a number, a unique number that will stay permanently with this sample for the time period we keep our records. Um, so basically it's just a five digit number. The first two digits are your, the year and then the last three digits are the sample number. So you can see even with COVID-19, we are at 268 samples this year. So I generally at this point of the year, June, July, we are hitting about 500 to 600 samples. But because of COVID-19 shutdown, we didn't receive that many samples. Here is another example uh, of a sample that's been collected by Department of Agriculture and Forestry. This is a regular sample. This is a quarantine sample. So you can see the difference. This just came in in a regular gift bag. But this sample, it has a number, collection number and everything, and it's double bag. Okay. And this sample, we are looking, we, we have specifications to look this sample, uh, test this sample for citrus greening. So citrus greening is not a, a contagious disease so uh, compared to citrus canker. So we don't recommend that homeowners or commercial growers or anybody who deals with citrus, they should touch any citrus canker uh, symptom, symptomatic plants. But because citrus greening is not, so I'm going to take it out and look at the sample. And in order to look at the sample, I should go to the biosafety cabinet to see if there are any insects or anything like that. So here I'm just visually examining it. Um, the test we are going to run for it is a molecular test. But I want to make sure that we are looking at something which is kind of symptomatic for citrus screening. So you can see this type of blotchy mottling you can see here is some blotchy modeling, here is some blotchy modeling, okay. Uh, but at the same time, this blotchy modeling can easily be caused by a nutrition deficiency or something like that. And you can see there is some similarity in these two different leaves. They have similar kind of symptoms, so we definitely need to test it. Uh, so for this testing, we have to take the midrib samples out and we either do the DNA extraction and then we will run that for with specific reagents that will only amplify the citrus greening DNA if it's there. So in this case, this sample came from a nursery owner in Repeats Parish, and they are worried about this necrotic lesions on the margins of this plant. So in these kind of samples, the first thing we do is take the, the leaves under a dissecting microscope and see if we can find any fungal structures or any signs of the fungal disease. So right now I'm just looking at that affected part and I'm trying to see any any kind of spores that might be produced on it or any insects um, and I'm try also trying to see if there is any because um, sometimes what you what you see is you can look at the spots leaf spots and you can have a little bit of idea that if it is produced by a fungal pathogen or a bacterial pathogen. And also sometimes viruses may produce similar kind of symptoms. So we, I'm just looking for any signs or any, any symptom similarity here. So after this, what we'd like to do is we will cut this tissue out from the transition zone here where you have the healthy and the dead part. 
and then we played it on different kind of different set of media in order for it to grow out of that medium and then we can ID it depending upon what kind of spores it's producing what kind of uh, bacterial colonies it's producing we can we, we have an idea on what we're dealing with if it's a plant pathogen if it's a fungal pathogen or a bacterial pathogen viruses you can't culture out viruses so we have different tests for viruses so once we have once we have them on the artificial media and this is just a plate showing um, a plant uh, that was baited the roots and soil was baited with these camellia discs uh, the pathogen if it's present it will swim up and colonize the leaf discs and we'll take those leaf discs out of it and then we will rinse them with water and then stick it underneath the media this media is very it has all the antibiotics and chemicals in it so it will only let that phytophthora uh, produce into the into the culture so by now you have to look it under the light microscope and see if it's producing the mycelium that you're looking for uh, again these are the so depending upon the type of the mycelium you can tell if it is a, a, a phytophthora or not here I have a good example of the phytophthora mycelium how it looks like so this is actually a coral okay uh, coral reef uh, and the mycelium will look exactly like that it's knobby and it's just if you can imagine this shape the phytophthora most of the phytophthora will be knobby like that so we have a preliminary diagnosis that this is caused by a phytophthora type pathogen.